reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. O stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ is publicly portrayed as crucified? What I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the spirit from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does then the one who supplied the spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. Though his prophets who promised of old that he would save us from all our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. He has promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up and give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And so I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake if he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you, then, <clears throat> if you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. The argument that St. Paul is trying to make in the course of the entire letter of the Galatians is a, a very, very intricate one, and it involves the ways in which in those days passages from scripture would be interpreted, but the bottom line is this. He is utterly convinced that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. His experience on the road to Damascus has utterly convinced him. Okay, but he also knows that Jesus Christ was crucified. Okay, so how do you put all that together and make any sense out of it? The only way you can do it from St. Paul's point of view is to say this was the way in which salvation is intended now to come. And by doing anything other than turning to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're, selling, you're basically saying that he died to no purpose. And that's, in fact, the quote that, that Paul uses in the letter to the Galatians. If you want to go to the works of the law, then Christ died to no purpose. I will not tolerate that answer. I won't tolerate that answer. So he proclaims here that Jesus Christ is public, 
publicly portrayed as crucified. How strong can you get? So Paul understands something very, very fundamental, I think. And that is, how do we see the reality of Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection in our own lives? How do we make sense of his great gift of mercy for us? How do we live it? How do we share it? In the long run, the gospel gives us a partial answer because Luke's version of this ask and you shall receive passage, in fact, says, when Matthew says that the Heavenly Father will give good things, okay, Luke knows exactly what those good things are. It's the Holy Spirit and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How do we use the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we've been given? Do we ask for them? Do we demand them? Do we insist on them? Do we know that they come to us because of the grace of Jesus Christ crucified and risen? This is where we, this is where we are today. We want to know, okay, Lord, I want to know you. Paul says to the Corinthians, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified because I've fallen in love with him because of what he has done for me, given me this great gift of mercy. Maybe we can share that gift of mercy also today. Maybe we can claim and insist on the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are promised to us. If we knock, if we ask, if we seek, the Holy Spirit is ours. Let us stand together.